Patrick. Together, we are JP Adventures 19. I'm hiding in the kitchen editing and um, yeah we have Wi-Fi in here now because the Wi-Fi router is in one of the rooms and the thing is if you shut the doors it kind of blocks the Wi-Fi signal it's a bit annoying so we try to leave the door open as much as possible but look at this weather it's insane it's pouring down all day long and I'm wearing my blue light glasses for editing let me know if you guys could feel a difference when wearing blue light glasses when working on screens like a phone, tablet or um, watching TV or a laptop. I would really love to hear about you guys your and your experience. Yeah, I'm still testing. <laughs> so a little tip when you're uh, marking where to notch out your pipes, pretty much find the inside seam so let me see if I can find the light so you can see the uh, seam right there on the bottom and then you can follow that on the outside there's like a little line here and that's where you notch it and that like that's where you mark it for the notch that way you, your, your notches line up perfectly in line along the whole thing so you're not going by like a line that might be twisted a bit So the tubes are not, the pipes are notched and rounded out like that. So now when you put them up to the pipe, they fit like that. Now I'll just clean up the edges and weld it. this letter it's <laughs> almost done. It is done yeah but we still have to make the mount on the bottom and now he's working on the second one here are the two bars and he's currently cutting notches into the steps so he can weld them on so look at okay. this have fun I have to go and insulate the hatches and our door we are in Bambury. We have to get a lot of things. We literally spent the first half of the day um, on our laptops, on Patrick's CAD drawings, trying to figure out how many sheets of plywood we need um, and bolts and everything that we can keep going. It's so much to think about, building all those cabinets and walls and line everything and paint everything and yeah, so... Um, we're trying to find good plywood. We weren't lucky at Bunnings for the last couple of weeks So now we're trying some local shops in Bunbury and we'll see how we go Hopefully we can find some really nice ply because otherwise we're not sure what to do Back on the farm and we got a lot of ply sheets which will hopefully be enough They're hiding in a packing shed Let me show you Right here. So these are ours and from the coaster guys. Look at that. And the finish is really nice. So they're great BBCC. Um, AA would be marine ply and CD is what we could find at Bunnings. And Bunnings had a whole lot of knots in their ply sheets. We got 112 mil sheets from MB Building Products. That was great CD as well but really nice. Not as smooth as these ones, but really nice as well. Yeah, so today we started measuring the rest of the floorboards, the subfloor that's gonna go in, um, so we can cut them out already, and then we have to do the plumbing before we can screw them in, but at least we have the sizes, we know if they fit, where they go. <laughs> and because the weather is not great, we'll just stay undercover. We 
measured everything and put it on here. So now we know where to cut. It's a bit tricky, so this cutout will go around the little motor that runs this little balcony. That's an SHS bar, I like that one as well, and that one as well. So hopefully we can cut it out and it fits the first time and we don't have to adapt it much. This will be our guide for our circular saw and we attach the vacuum cleaner so we're not making a mess. We have the shape cut out with the circular saw. We have to go and do the, the corners with the jigsaw because if you would cut this out with the circular saw, you would actually have a cut on the surface up until somewhere here to get through the entire board here. All right, done. These are the edges for the SHF bars. That's for the motor, and now we're gonna try to fit it. A little bit later, we cut a few more pieces. So now, it's pretty much done. Shoes off. Shoes off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the entire floor is lined. We're not gonna line these bits, as you know, and that. We still have to do the shower base. I like it, Patrick. You can actually walk. But we we'll, won't screw this board down because we still have to take it out, do some plumbing work underneath and wiring. Look who found us. Hey! Yeah. Here! Yeah. You have to look up! Yeah. Baby! Yeah! Hey! Yeah. are currently working on our shower base and when you're tiling it's always better if you can use one piece of ply or whatever you want to put underneath. We can't because it's not enough so um, we made a plan and we are using a 16 millimeter router bit for the groove. Who put that? Who adjusted that one so correctly? <laughs> yeah, it was the first attempt. <laughs> it was just right. So 9.5 and 9.5, so it should be fine. It should be 19, which is the thickness of our sheet. It's another new day. Um, Patrick went to work. He has to lift like heavy rocks into the shovel of the big tractor because um, they are pretty much cleaning up one of the, the paddocks. They set everything on fire a few weeks back. And yeah, so now they're cleaning up and Patrick had to help. So I'm by myself and I'm trying to get something done. So I took the measurements for um, the, the corner under the bed, the garage pretty much. And I'm gonna cut it out of 12 mil ply sheets and I'm just gonna put all these measurements on here and cut it and hopefully it will fit. <laughs> it's on there. Now I only have to hope that it doesn't start raining because I can only cut outside today. So yeah, we'll see. And the first one's done. So now let's go and check if it fits. All right, so I still have to cut out um, a little notch here for our SHS. And the gap between that corner of the SHS frame for the bed and the, um, the button that's behind the vapor barrier is not 12 mil. <laughs> so I can't slide it all the way in there. So I might have to router a notch in there as well. Raining! Yay! It's pouring! 
If you're wondering why we're not making a lot of progress, the weather is just going crazy. So it's windy and rainy and I'm trying to cut um, that sheet of ply. I'm undercover but as soon as it's windy from the wrong side, it's just blowing the entire rain in here which wouldn't be good. So yeah, this is what we have to deal with. Little sheepies are hiding in the corner. But look at this beautiful piece of plywood. It's great BBCC. No, like really bad knots. It's all really smooth. It's kind of red. It looks really nice. And this is six millimeter thick and we're gonna use this to plat the walls under our bed for the garage area. I cut another sheet out. It's this six small beautiful looking ply, um, ply sheet. And that's going to go he around here and on top of the bed. It's a bit annoying to have those SHS bars coming out of the wall because you have to work around it. So on this side I had like this top piece and the bottom piece and they just come together. This one has notches on it. And here I have to modify this one. And yeah, this will go like here and on top. And then I'll have to cut out another smaller piece that goes around the bottom. and on the side of the SHS. So let's see if it fits. And I have to do a few minor modifications. So here it's sitting on our um, subfloor board and here on that ply and that's um, further down than this. So it's one centimeter of a difference. So I have to cut a notch in here a notch in here and then I'll cut off a tiny bit at the end so it sticks better together with that 12 more piece over there. I'm done cutting ply sheets for today. I'll show you the result tomorrow. And now we'll film Patrick a bit because he's never doing that himself. <laughs> so we are currently attaching the letters. The one on the other side is done and now we'll do this one and show you how we do it. So Patrick created this little plate um, and welded on two little bars that are welded onto the letter as well. And we have four holes in it to uh, mount it to the side of the cap. And these are M8 holes and we got M8 riv nuts. Now, the tricky thing is we don't have a tool to um, install riv nuts. So we watched a bunch of YouTube videos. And we don't need a tool, but... I hate rib nuts, so we're not using rib nuts if we don't have to. And, uh, we had no so other option, using... but anyways, um, we'll show you how we do it, because we don't have the tool. We watched YouTube videos on how you can do it without one, and now Patrick's going to tell you. Hey kid, don't ever let All right, the four holes are drilled. And now Patrick's taking the letter off and he's gonna drill 13 millimeter holes. So we can fit the rib nuts in there. I'll fight for what I love with every breath. My past is filled with things I won't forget. I use them all to push me to my best. So treat the worst of times just like a test. If only I could go back in time. Three of the rib nuts are in but not working yet. Like. It's just the shell that's in there and one's left here and now Patrick's gonna explain to you how it works. So this part of the riv nut is the thread and then this part is the crush part that'll actually get crushed up against whatever this sits in here. Um, so pretty much what we try what we're trying to do is use a pretty much a bolt, an M8 bolt. Um, as the riv nut tool because we don't have a tool we only have eight of these to do and we're not going to get a tool just for those eight um, so pretty much what I made is a little flat um, two mil bar 
with a little bend in the end so you can grab it nicely. Um, what you do with this is you push it up against the riv nut um, and then you hold the bolt captive with either like a socket or a spanner and then you use another spanner and just wind this bolt back out and that'll pretty much just compress this together. Um, the reason why you don't just use a washer is because you have to put so much force onto the riv nut um, when you just have the washer on there that you actually end up just spinning the riv nut out as well so it doesn't work as well. That's why you have this. How do you know? Don't ask. <laughs> He's been trying for hours. So this, um, <laughs> this bar is really handy because it literally keeps the riv nut in place and then all you have to do is just wind out the nut and it actually works pretty easily. Yeah, so let's go. Let's do it. All right, it helps to put a bit of silicon spray or something to lube it up there so this doesn't have too much friction or else you'll be working against that as well. And then always use the round, like closed part of the spanner and not the forks because these will eventually just slip off the uh, threads. The shanks, sorry. They wanna rise up while you drown. They wanna fill your head with doubt. They're silently scared that you'll figure it out. I'll make it look like I'm losing. Won't bother hiding my bruises. And when they finally think you're wounded, then it's your chance to be ruthless. wasn't even hard when the nut is not jammed or the threads are I don't know recut. <laughs> so as a little tip while we're here and talking um, get yourself a couple of set screws so we only have longer bolts but the thread only goes about halfway and you need a bit of space between where you put the spanner on and to where you put the head of the socket because you should be pressing down on the socket and then turning the spanner but you'll need to obviously remove it to turn it keep turning it um, so set screws will be a bit long like they'll have a longer thread and you can actually screw this down a bit further and get it further into the um, rib nut and um, the second little tip is get a couple of nuts and change out the nut probably every two or three that you do because otherwise you have a swearing partner like Patrick <laughs> freaking out because <laughs> it's not working. <laughs> and then we used a, a new nut and it literally worked the first time. <laughs> Those three are done and we have one more to go. And you might be able to see how flat these ones are if the focus works. <laughs> And then this one is still like a bit more warped. So you can see this one is not done yet, but this one is, because it's really nice and flat. Step one, wake up, brother, gonna ride in the sun. Step two, get some good, some food in you. Step three, you grow hard about what you wanna be. Step four, can everybody just do your thing? Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. You look cold. I think you need to do some climbing. <laughs> oh, there's something in the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that looks like it's working. <laughs> Not. <laughs> Alright, it's 10 p.m. Um, time to clean up. 
this mess <laughs> and go to sleep. It's clean already. See you tomorrow. And a new day and the same weather. Yay. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm quickly going to show you the letters that we put on in daylight. This is one side going all the way up. Attached with two bolts at the top. M12 bolts, Katri? M12 bolts at the top. Four M8s here. That's the plate, still has to get painted everything. It's really solid. And then the exact same thing. <laughs> the exact same thing on the other side. And now we only have to figure out a way how to climb up and then across because of the overhang. <laughs> And it's pouring again. We are undercover and we're gonna cut the first dividing wall or side wall of our slide out pantry. So this is right next to the bed. It has to be super stable because it will carry a lot of weight. So... Yeah, that's really nervous. I can't mess this up. It's an expensive panel. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's a reason though Ups and downs just like every different season yo Sometimes I'm high, other times I'm barely breathing though I always gotta fight and hide from the demons yo Alright, it's all done Cut to the right size, hopefully We haven't tested it yet And I already sanded the surface And we changed our previous sander and For everyone that saw that one in For this orbital sander Which works a lot better so that was a good investment and we're using 240 grit really fine sandpaper and just went over the surface you can tell like it's not as shiny anymore it's a bit brighter than the original piece and now we're gonna test it does it fit Well, we still have to put a lid on top. So this is right next to the bed. It's gonna go here. Right, we drew a line where we had to cut one of the panels that goes under the bed. Um, yeah, and I'm getting them all ready for some painting. And this one, um, the CD ply, is really rough. Like this, so I'm sanding it with the orbital sander, and I have sanded this one, and now it's really nice and smooth. I love it. This way, will it ever stop again? <laughs> Loving over here. Since everything is sanded, um, I'm painting the back side of the panels because we won't get to them anymore and we want to seal them somehow just in case we have some condensation forming. And we are using the cheapest paint you can find at Bunnings. <laughs> it's an outdoor paint actually. And it's UV, a UV barrier for sun protection. <laughs> um, yeah, there will never be sun on them, but it's fine, it's cheap. So we're coating all the panels with it, one's back there. And then we'll actually do the undercoat of the nice side that everyone will be able to see. dry until tomorrow because it's pretty cold so it will take way longer to dry another sheets back there what are you doing Patrick Surprise. steel work <laughs> all right guys that's it for this week's episode I will continue painting those panels on the other side that you will actually see 
and mount them and we will start building cabinets while Patrick is still doing some steel work that we'll show you as well. So, see you all next week! Hold on a second, we want to say thank you to Matthew White and Ellen for helping us out on Buy Me A Coffee. If you want to help us out as well, just check the link down below, it's buymeacoffee.com, JP Adventures 19 and you can support us on our way and while building this truck.